Movie stars might seem like they get all the glitz and glamour, but if you really want to pull in that lean green, you want to get yourself on a popular TV show. With per episode fees topping a million dollars, it's pretty nice work if you can get it. Old Tiger Blood himself, Charlie Sheen started out on the big screen just like his movie star father, Martin. And just like his movie star father, Charlie also made the big money move to the small screen. Before his very winning meltdown, Charlie Sheen was receiving $1.8 million an episode to play Charlie Harper in Two and a Half Men. That was enough to bring his net worth to $150 million. But that was then. Charlie Sheen very publicly has taken the idea of living large and ran with it. The more salacious aspects of his wild spending sprees have been enough to make the leap from tabloid fodder to the evening news. Oh yeah, you know you're partying then. While his no-breaks lifestyle has cost him, he had other spending habits that for a normal star would still be remarkable. Uh, like running out the entire Houston Astrodome to play ball with his friends. The star who was offered a baseball scholarship to the University of Kansas bought 2,615 outfield seats in 1996 to an Anaheim Angels game to ensure he catch a home run ball, preferably from Cecil Fielder. Fielder nor anyone else hit a home run in that section though. Hey, can't win all the time. When Sheen had his very public split from Two and a Half Men, they needed another idol rich character to play off of John Cryer's mostly broke single dad. They went with a kind of spacey tech mogul character, played by Ashton Kutcher, perhaps preparing for his later role as Steve Jobs. While Kutcher had made a name for himself as Kelso on that 70s show and by pranking his friends on his hidden camera show Punked, the Chuck Lorre production still got a discount on their Charlie Sheen trade-in, paying Kutcher $755,000 per episode. Turns out, however, Tech Mogul really isn't a stretch for the star. He's managed to take his TV earnings and convert them into a $200 million net worth by investing in over 60 startups, including Airbnb, Skype, and Foursquare. That's enough to fund his $10 million LA farmhouse, in addition to his two Southern California properties, including a Santa Barbara beach house. Kutcher also forked over $200,000 to $250,000 for a ticket for Virgin Galactic's ride into space before Mila Kunis talked him into selling it back, feeling that a joyride into space was too risky for the new father. Aw, no fun. Before Tim Allen was the last man standing, or the voice of Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story, he was Tim the Toolman Taylor on the hit show Home Improvement. The show translated his stand-up routine celebrating power tools and horsepower into a sitcom about a home improvement show host, where he was able to demand a $1.25 million per episode salary. Tim Allen's passion for tools and horsepower are not an act, and that's reflected in his spending. He's introduced his own line of tools, with the proceeds being donated to children's charities. As you would expect, he also has an enviable car collection. American Muscle is well represented, including the hot rod his character rebuilt during the run of home improvement. Those share garage space with his practically a race car, Porsche Carrera GT, as well as the no really, it's a race car, Ford RS200, built for the All Bonkers Group B Rally Series. He told GQ that he found out the car wasn't even road legal when he was pulled over driving it. Not to be deterred, he took his heavy right foot to the racetrack, teaming up with Celine, a tuner and boutique car maker, to form a racing team of his own named after his barking catchphrase, Celine Allen RRR Speed Labs, that competed in the World Challenge and Grand Am Series. In 2000, his team made a go at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, but wasn't able to make it twice around the clock to finish. Chris Pratt first won audiences' hearts as the goofy Andy Dwyer on the long-running Parks and Rec, but his fame got galactic as Peter Quill, that is Star-Lord, in Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Since taking on the superhero role, complete with those daily personal trainer abs, he's joined Hemsworth, Pine, and Evans of the handsome Chris's. Pratt's taken his good guy, good looks back to TV, starring in the upcoming Prime series The Terminal List, where his role as a surviving member of a SEAL team and taking home $1.4 million an episode. He's able to add that to his superhero and action star earnings for an $80 million net worth. That includes his $15.6 million Pacific Palisades mansion. The 8,000 square foot digs is a five bedroom, six bath house with a custom gym to keep Pratt in action hero shape. Pratt has the usual assortment of high priced automobiles, but none of them are as notorious as a $2,500 1965 Beetle he got playing blackjack. Buying manuals and watching YouTube videos, the actor spent the next 12 years restoring and customizing the car until he got it to where he liked it, at least for now. Jerry Seinfeld was the creator, writer, and star of one of the most popular sitcoms of all time, which just so happened to also have his name on it. For him and his co-creator, Larry David, that has meant a rather healthy payday, above and beyond his one million per episode pay. Like, very healthy. We're talking captain of industry healthy. 
A $950 million net worth is usually reserved for people whose creations have .com in their name. With that kind of money, anything he collects has the potential of being pretty enviable, regardless of who you are. Seinfeld's collection of choice is Porsche. After buying a powder blue roadster he saw listed in Hemings News while visiting Jay Leno in 1991, his collection now includes a 1973 911 Carrera RS, one of only 1,580, and a model that changes hands at auctions for over $1 million. That was backed into while visiting a comedian friend. I'm sure no one was laughing then. And he got to watch it in real time. Just painful. He also has a coveted Porsche 959, an engineering exercise by Porsche who only put out 337 examples. Seinfeld paid 700 k for his, but it's only legal in the U.S. under the show and exemption for cars that were not federalized for use in the United States. The other strong contender for the most iconic 90s sitcom aired on the same channel on the same night. Of course, that's Friends. Matt LeBlanc played the handsome, but dim, aspiring actor Joey, who was able to attract women just by asking how they were doing. For his troubles, he also received one million an episode. LeBlanc tried to keep the Joey magic going with the spinoff, but the real return to that magic was playing an exaggerated version of himself on the show Episodes. On the show and in real life, LeBlanc has always been a lover of cars, which earned him a spot briefly on the BBC's premier car show, Top Gear. All of this is good for a net worth of $80 million. During press for episodes, LeBlanc admitted to some strange purchases, including a purple velvet couch and a Ferrari he loved, but also thought was ridiculous. He also bought his own bulldozer, which he said he needed, but he maybe didn't need one as big as he got. Steve Carell has made a career out of portraying characters with an unearned sense of confidence. First as an early correspondent for The Daily Show, and then playing Michael Scott on the American adaptation of The Office. That role put a modest, seeming by these standards, $175,000 in the bank per episode. That and subsequent roles, including a more star-worthy $1 million per episode for Space Force, is enough to give the actor a net worth of $80 million. This has allowed him to buy comedian Jonathan Winter's Toluca Lake home between Burbank and Hollywood for $6 million, only to level it and build a new one on top, featuring elevators and a screening room, and another house closer to his childhood roots in Marshall Hills, Massachusetts. Carell also purchased a general store in Marshall, simply because he believed the place to be a historical landmark worth preserving. General stores for small communities also acted as a social gathering place, where people could grab coffee and meet their neighbors, something Carell thought might be fading. While not in town, the store is run by his sister-in-law, who tells visitors hoping to catch the comedic actor and star of Space Force that they just missed him. The Walking Dead is predicated on the notion that no character is safe. That being said, the one character that fans probably would never accept being killed is the one that didn't come from the comic book, Daryl Dixon. That's pretty good security for his $550,000 per episode salary, good for a $25 million net worth. Norman Reedus himself is a far gentler soul than his rough-edged character who enjoys the company of artists and explorers, something that is featured in his less gore-heavy ride with Norman Reedus. It's not just the people he likes in that show, it's the way they get around. On motorcycles, something he shares with his Walking Dead counterpart. That's something he asked for in his character because he's afraid of horses. Huh, I am too, man. They're giant monster creatures who are only letting us ride them so they can plot our demise. Reedus' collection includes a custom knucklehead by Power Plant in Los Angeles, but his dream custom would be one built by old school custom bike legend Indian Larry, whose creations have been bought at auction for as much as $220,000. Matt LeBlanc's Joey had an odd couple roommate in Chandler, an office worker with a sharp tongue played by Matthew Perry. Perry joined his castmates with a $1 million per episode salary. Perry has faced some personal challenges that have left other high profile stars broke. But Perry retains an enviable net worth of $120 million, thanks largely to some shrewd real estate purchases. His latest cycle of simplifying while putting some money in his pockets comes from selling his mansion in the sky, an entire floor of the Century City Tower that features four bedrooms and twice as many bathrooms. Hey, when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> he bought the luxury condo space in 2017 for $20 million and originally listed it for sale at $35 million, though the final sale was $21.6 million. That was still good enough to be the most expensive Century City condo sale since 2015. The building features a lap pool, gym, and even wine storage, but all that comes with HOA fees that exceed $7,000. A month. He also listed his Malibu beach house that he bought in 2011 for $12 million for over $13 million. This gives him plenty to cover his new purchase, a $6 million cottage in Chris Pratt's new town of Pacific Palisades. 
While Gabriel Iglesias' show, Mr. Iglesias, only ran for 21 episodes with no indication what his per episode salary might be. Between his guest and voice work on other television shows and his comedy shows, he manages to make around 20 million a year for a net worth of $30 million. That has earned him the distinction of being one of the top 10 paid comedians. When the comedian who refers to himself as Fluffy started to taste success, he got some financial advice from Jay Leno, saying that cars were a growth investment that you could actually enjoy. Iglesias' cocktail of choice is the first generation Volkswagen bus. His collection is valued at $3 million, which adds up quicker than you think. While not too long ago, you could pick up the iconic tiny vans for almost nothing, certain models have started to demand as much as 200 k at auctions, as nostalgia and car collecting as an investment has taken off. With the Type 2's 40 horsepower and a 0-60 to 60 time of maybe, Iglesias satisfies his need for speed with a 707 horsepower Dodge Challenger Hellcat and a modern Camaro converted to resemble a Trans Am and signed by Burt Reynolds. Man, I'm jealous. Another comedian to convert his stand-up into sitcom gold in the 90s is Ray Romano, who demanded $1.75 million per episode for his show, Everybody Loves Raymond. Nothing about Romano's comedy suggests he'd be the kind of guy seen pushing up the scissor doors of an exotic Lamborghini. Instead, his money goes into a growing portfolio of real estate in the Los Angeles area. His main dig since the 90s is a custom-built Mediterranean-style house in an affluent Encino neighborhood. In 2004, he traded $8.5 million for a Malibu beach house, one of the few with an ocean-facing pool. Just over four years ago, he punked out $2.1 million for a ranch-style house in Venice, California. And last year, he became Toluca Lake neighbors with Steve Carell, buying a $6 million estate that backs up to the lakeside golf course. The lake itself requires a rather generous definition of lake. Friends made stars of its stars, which is strangely a sentence that makes total sense. But one star managed to change an entire generation's hair. Jennifer Aniston's character Rachel became the name of her due on the show, where she earned that cool million an episode. She's also been one of the more successful cast members post Friends, including depositing two million an episode for the Apple TV series Morning Show, which has allowed her net worth to reach 300 million. If you've ever made the mistake of telling your girlfriend that you like her no makeup look and she's taking you makeup shopping just so you're aware of how much makeup actually goes into her no makeup look, or you're just a woman who wears makeup, you know that it gets expensive fast. Being a woman is spendy. In a beauty driven, youth obsessed industry like film and television, keeping up with demands can add up as well. In Aniston's case, that has meant spending upwards of $200,000 a year on cosmetics. But that doesn't mean she has to skimp when it comes to fancy digs, which includes her current residence, a mansion in Bel Air that she picked up for $20.97 million and then promptly started working with designer Stephen Shadley to make the place her own. Aniston co-stars with Reese Witherspoon on The Morning Show, and the pair worked together on Big Little Lies as well. Put that together with her other roles like Little Fires Everywhere, and it all adds up to a $400 million net worth for Witherspoon. This has led her to be able to make some staggering property purchases. Like in 2003, when she bought a Brentwood estate for $4.7 million, then the house next to it for $3.3 million, only to level it and turn the entire lot into her backyard. A third parcel purchase would bring total spending to $11 million for a total of 1.32 acres. But in 2014, they were broken back into three lots and sold at cost. In 2010, she bought Steven Seagal's Mandeville Canyon Ranch for $6.9 million, had the house destroyed, and then sold the empty lot in 2012 for $8 million. Man, she loves knocking down houses. The $2 million Nashville mansion she bought around that time sitting on six acres came with a caveat that this house could not be knocked down. Her Malibu farm came and went in her life, buying for $6.3 and selling for $6.7 million. Her current digs are back into Brentwood this time, in a $15.9 million three-acre estate at the end of a private road that ends in a gate. That's goals. Kaylee Cuoco has managed to convert her $1 million per episode from The Big Bang Theory to producing and starring in The Flight Attendant, all good for a net worth of $100 million. That's enough to indulge her expensive passion, horses. Her $12 million Hidden Hills Ranch provides room for her 25 horses. She even offered to purchase Saint Boy, the horse that refused to jump during the Tokyo Olympics and was filmed being struck by its rider, an offer she continues to make. Cuoco was even a competitive rider herself. Oprah Winfrey doesn't have TV star money, no, no, no. She has mogul money. The former queen of daytime and the person that rewrote the rules for daytime talk shows has a net worth of a staggering 2.6 billion. Yes, that's billion with a B. That fortune starts with the 315 million a year she got for doing that show and ends with her own production company, Harpo, 
which is Oprah backwards. Her main digs is a massive estate referred to as the Promised Land, which she bought for $50 million, but in 2012 was assessed at $90 million. This accompanies her 163 acres in Hawaii she bought for $5.3 million, and a mansion in Telluride, Colorado, totaling 60 acres for $10.85 million. She's really gone in on her biggest passion. You guessed it, bathtubs. Okay, maybe you didn't guess it. She told Vanity Fair about her love for baths that stemmed from the dingy tub that she had growing up, vowing to get the best bathtubs. That includes one that's carved out of marble to a cast of her own body. She didn't say how much that cost, but we're gonna guess a lot. With the kind of money talked about here, I'd buy 100,000 Big Mouth Billy Basses, and then program them all to do the vocal part to carol the bells, and then rig that to my doorbell. Ha, <laughs> probably a good thing I'm not rich.